We're here for you. We will eat the snacks. We'll eat them again, and then we'll ask, You tried that? All right, we're back. If you tried that, I'm one of your hosts, Nick Novak, and we're here with my pals, Chad Hancock. How's it going? And Nick Geiger. Howdy. And we're going to try a few more snacks for you this week. We do this as a help to you, the listener, so that you don't get home with a snack that you think uh, you're going to love it, and then it just turns out that it's total garbage. I consider us sort of a public service, you know, a nonprofit, if you will. And any charitable donations you'd like to send can be sent our way, and uh, you will not be able to take them off your taxes because we're not actually a nonprofit. How often, speaking of that, do you guys actually come home from the store with a snack that you've never tried before? That I've never tried before? Probably not all that often. I usually end up getting the same stuff I like, like Cool Ranch Doritos or like popcorn or something like that. I only ever do it if it's from a brand that I'm familiar with. Like I'll pretty rarely just grab some random thing off the shelf. Although I have been trying to do that more lately with different types of chips or stuff like that, where I'll just say, Hey, this, let's try this out. Maybe I'll find a new favorite, but I don't think I do it too often with, uh, with candies. Actually candy. I seem to stick to the tried and true Reese's cups or something like that. Now, how often do you come home with something that you heard three jackasses on a podcast talking about? <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Every day. In, in between, just as I came home with seven bushels full of edamame. I couldn't wait to start eating it because I had heard how great it was. And it, it was also supposedly heart healthy. No, um, not too often. No, I can't say that. Would you, would you say that it's too, you've gone too far for really any food to help your heart at this point? <laughs> I think... <laughs> The only thing that will help my heart is a fully trained cardiologist <laughs> and, a, and a willingness to change my diet. So neither one of those is anywhere near me right now. So, so if you're like, uh, should I eat these edamame? And he says, eh, what the hell? <laughs> He's like, eh, no, nah, they, they taste like shit. <laughs> There's better ways to help your heart than eating this garbage. And then he whipped it across my lawn. Yeah, actually, Chad was saying we're a nonprofit. I would like to make this a for-profit venture. <laughs> Um, because I'm my healthcare benefits are going to be going skyrocketing pretty quickly here. So, if you want to contribute to my GoFundMe of not dying, that'd be well, great. Well, I've got news for you: no one's listening to this, and we're not getting any advertisers. Damn it! <laughs> <All right. laughs> you definitely can stop buying the full size bags of all the snacks. <laughs> yes. What I could do is stop eating all of them too. I'm like literally. We still have some of the old snacks we did from previous episodes, and I'm literally eyeing up this bag of Cool Ranch Doritos and trying not to eat it right now. So, <laughs> I'm set to come over to your house in about three hours. Is uh, will there be any of those left? Oh yeah. Well, that amame will be there waiting for you. <laughs> oh, you have plenty of amame and amame for you. There's plenty of crappy candy bar. I will. I will leave this bag untouched so we can share it together. How's that? Okay. Should be noted what we fil- we uh, film. We record a couple of these at a time. So usually, if you're listening to an even numbered podcast, then <laughs> we're feeling pretty fat already at that point. So, uh, fellas, what's what are you looking forward to today of these uh, three? Pin. I mean, we've got some pinwheels, right? I can reveal that. Spoiler. Pinwheel, not the kind with the stick that you like twirl around in the wind, right? The toy. We're talking about the snack pinwheel, just to be fucking clear. Oh shit, I bought uh, the wrong thing. Yeah, go back, go back to the dime store with your pinwheel. I don't know what you buy a pinwheel. Ah, uh, so now these the cookies with like a layer of cookie and marshmallow on top, covered in chocolate. That is right up my alley. I'm excited. I haven't eaten one of these in probably 20 years. I'm excited. At the risk of driving more listeners away, I have never had a pinwheel either. And That's so, a little less rare than the Doritos. Yeah, but but we were walking through the grocery store, so I needed I knew I needed to go out and buy them, and we were walking through the grocery store, me and my wife, and um, I was looking for them. I couldn't really find them in the cookie aisle, and all of a sudden she just and she did not know I was looking for them, and she just shouted out, "Pinwheels! I haven't had those in forever. Let's get some." And I thought, "Oh, yes, let's," because I need to stuff my face over Skype. 
So, <laughs> so just by some kind of crazy coincidence, she just happened to spot them and was also craving them. So I also hadn't had them forever. I bought a package and then had a couple, went to work and came home, and my family had eaten almost every pinwheel in the box. And so, <laughs> of course, I screamed and assaulted them all. <laughs> what about Whoa. my podcast? <laughs> Well, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I did tell Laura, they're for the podcast. <laughs> and she's like, settle down. <laughs> I bought some candy bars for a future episode this weekend. And eat, my daughter Evie's like, are those for us? I'm like, daddy needs to mail these to his adult friends, okay? <laughs> Shut it. So, yeah, they took my kid away. <laughs> well, now, Novak, for the sanctity of the podcast, you're supposed to wait. Until the pot, right? Like, you already have a predetermined... I had never eaten a Cool Ranch Dorito before that pocket. <laughs> never eaten a single one. We have this on Skype, and I, when we when we did the Doritos, I can tell that you had just stuffed the Doritos bag with socks because you had already finished them earlier, and you were just <laughs> pretending to eat them. Yeah. And then the sad thing is, I forgot and I ate the sock. Why are your socks so crunchy, Gagger? Jerking it. Okay. You, have a, <laughs> sure. you have a history of stuffing sacks into things and right. yeah. Doritos. This and is well, what happens as an adult. It's still related to Cool Ranch Doritos because typically when I see them, I jizz in my pants. <laughs> so I have to mop it up with the socks. Uh, can't wait for my family to listen to this. You jizz in your pants and at any given time you have five <laughs> socks also stuffed down to pants to make your package look not tiny. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So I just took the wadded up cock replacement <laughs> that both socks were. Took him out, put him in the bag, and then to calm myself down afterward, I stared at a bag of edamame, which made my dick shrivel inside my mouth. <sighs> didn't, <laughs> didn't you previous? I remember in college, you used to stuff your uh, boxers with <laughs> core <and> Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I well, couldn't even just... get that out. <laughs> a stupid. Where are we going here? Yeah, no, I used to. So the, the worst time is when we went to a strip club, and I bought a lap dance, and she just started lowering herself on me, and my pants made this horrible crunching noise. And then she's like, what's that? I said, oh, I forgot to tell you, I have a bunch of Cool Ranch Doritos in my pants. Right. It made no sense. And then you just <laughs> forget it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So make a walk- I was going to make a walking taco joke, but I <laughs> I figured that we've gone to why? Why right. suddenly are we so good for three episodes? And uh, <laughs> we're just last podcast. Dri- <laughs> driving people away by the second. <laughs> there was no people to drive away. <laughs> I'll still listen to it. That was the only person who was going to, right? <laughs> right. Uh, well, we talked a bunch about the pinwheel, so I guess we might as well lead with it. You, neither of you, have eaten one out of your package, right? Right. That's correct. We are good podcasters. <laughs> so, did you buy the pack that has like twelve cookies in it? Yeah, it's a big long. I think uh, that's well, you can do it, right? Uh, yeah, I didn't know if there was another a smaller pinwheel package, but ooh, these smell nice. These uh, were one of my favorites growing up, but they're a real kind of they were a real uh, once in a while treat. It's like five bucks for twelve of these things. So, uh, but they are larger. You know, it's. The size of, you could probably stack up two or three Chips Ahoy's to equal the size of one of these things. Yeah, I would say this is roughly equivalent to the size of one Geiger crotch sock. <laughs> yeah, and it's, the hole could, is perfect for my dong, too. I could probably fit it right in there. The small <laughs> hole, I guess. I should have said that. It's a visual medium, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is good cast. It, uh, basically, it's a, it's a cookie on bottom, covering maybe a quarter of it, 25% of it, and the top is marshmallow. All of that then covered in a chocolate shell. Now, that is actually much um, lighter than I was expecting. You know, I was kind of expecting a sort of, like, heavy... Like, even the cookie itself is sort of very light, which is nice. I feel like I could eat 30 of these and not gain a pound. <laughs> what are You guys have the package. What's the uh, nutrition facts on these things? It just says don't. <laughs> One cookie is 120 calories, and it has 0% of all vitamins. <laughs> what? Is that, is that a lot of cookie? Like, like, what's an Oreo? I don't like know what to compare it to. Less than 120 calories, I think. Yeah, I think an Oreo is, one Oreo is like uh, 60 calories or something. 
don't quote me on that. Serving size is one cookie, too, so that's 120 per cookie. Are you digging into number two there, Chad? <laughs> no. This is still number one, but I am going to put the whole second half of this into my mouth at once just to see what happens. My mouth is very full of marshmallow. <laughs> now say chubby bunny. <laughs> chubby bunny. <laughs> this is... I feel like they taste slightly different than my childhood brain remembered them. I seem to remember the bottom, the cookie on the bottom being a little less crumbly. The taste is, is still delicious. What are your first impressions? This is what I remember. This is good. I would eat a. I, I like marshmallow, like in dessert, like a mar, like all those like marshmallow bunnies at Easter and stuff. Those are really good. Not peeps, those suck. But like regular marshmallow, like chocolate covered bunnies so yeah i like this a lot this is what i remember as a kid i don't i disagree with you on the cookie part this is what i recall but you're you have more of a strong memory about them than i do i hate the that is my least favorite holiday candy either the santa or body or that's just the single packaged marshmallow covered in chocolate really Um, i for whatever reason i don't like the the marshmallow on that is much more off-putting than this marshmallow do you like those those things chad i do not. I don't like either. I don't like those, and I don't like Peeps in general. I think that's sort of a gross gross flavor. I do like marshmallows, but there's something about the overly... This is a dumb thing to say. There's something about the overly manufactured marshmallows that I don't like, and I know all marshmallows are like just as... <laughs> you <laughs> like to go forage for marshmallows in the woods. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm not saying Stay Puffed is like some kind of like organic experience or whatever, or Jet Puffed or whatever those... Stay puffed as Ghostbusters. Yeah, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I just assumed you were right. I didn't know. But like, like I'll like mar- marshmallows in a Rice Krispie treat is great. Something like that. Here, it's pretty good though. I do wish the cookie was a little bit crunchier. I think, but overall, I think this is really good. I actually would like the cookie to be a, a larger percentage of it too, um, as maybe even half of it cookie and half of it marshmallow. Yeah, be my preference. But still good. Let's uh, start the rating cycle with. Uh, Oh boy! Like I said, they were good. I would like. I mean, because of their size and they're kind of a bigger dessert. I don't think I could eat like you know Oreos. I could eat a whole sleeve at once. These I think I could probably only eat like one or two, and then it would be too much. But they're very good. I would be glad to have these in the house. I would put it as a like that. (laughs) You'd be glad to have them in the house. (laughs) (laughs) I would not be upset around all the time. Like I would glad like if. The Nabisco company wanted to send me a few <laughs> laying around. I'm just saying, if you were trying to get rid of like surplus pinwheels and you didn't want people to buy them, it's a poor business decision. But uh, no, these are good. I would give this a strong. I wouldn't say love. It was a little bit too much that, but I'd say it's a like that. All right, uh, Chad, how about you? I'm in a second to like that. The marshmallow is just a little bit too much marshmallow, but all the flavors are good. It's a good combination of flavors. The cookie's a little big. I don't think I can eat a second one right now, but that might just because be because my stomach is full of so many other things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these were a pleasant surprise. I've never tried these before, and um, I'm uh, I feel good that they're in my house. It makes me feel good. So <laughs> like that. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get the perfect uh, trifecta here. I think our first one. Because as much as much as I have a great memory of these things and love them as a kid. I'm still not going to put them at the top of my cookie list. Still, I feel like just a treat to have on occasion. I don't love marshmallow. I like it fine, but that probably stops it from from getting a love for me. Just the fact that it is this uh, candied marshmallow. So I'm going to go with like that. And so uh, we got the strong three strong like that's, and I am more than glad to have these in my house. So. <laughs> <laughs> It gets the welcome visitor award, right? <laughs> Showing up and announced. You're happy to see it. So, speaking of marshmallow, how do you guys come? Where do you come down on s'mores? Do you like s'mores? Oh, s'mores are great. Here's the thing about s'mores: a s'more, a actual s'more, yes, is a, yeah. is a love debt. Like a s'more when you get making it at the fire outside is a is a strong love debt. That's as good a snack as you can have. But there's so many s'more flavored products that they try to make now that just can't get it right. Like you just can't recreate that the homemade s'more. What do you guys think about the like the roasting marshmallow technique? So we have some friends that just burn it. Like it's just like a black meteor. 
but the inside is really not that cooked. And then the other people who take a half an hour to like lightly brown it on all sides and stuff like that. Like, which do you prefer? I actually do like a little black on it, like a little char to the mush- marshmallow. I do the hybrid. I will take the half hour or whatever to sort of slow, slow roast it. Like it's pulled pork or something. <laughs> and then, um, and then at the very end, I'll dunk it straight into the fire so that it gets like the, f- the char around the outside. My only complaint though, then about s'mores is when you do something like that, the marshmallow becomes so gooey that your hand just like, you're just going to get sticky and you know if the and if you don't have anything around to wipe your hands on then you just end up wiping them on the hot coals to clean them and so <laughs> then you end up with 50 degree burns everywhere so. yeah that's a i hadn't failed to consider that yeah i do have a keeping a marshmallow out of my beard problem when it gets real gooey so i just have all this like crappy shit in my cra- for those who don't know me have i have a really crappy looking goatee that's i don't maintain at all so i get like tendrils of marshmallow like just wedged in there it's pretty gross they're usually there months later too which is yeah right i still have one actually <laughs> i uh very i'm on the total opposite end of the burn i probably heat that marshmallow up as little as anybody around a given fireplace i would actually i've gone to the i've been inside and just put a marshmallow on a graham cracker with hershey like the day after and just ate the cold marshmallow in s'more form so it doesn't even have to be all that hot for me to enjoy this more flavor. That is a bold move. Yeah, that's hot. So you just take a hard marshmallow and squish it between graham crackers? It's not hard. It is a marshmallow, so what? it's cold. <laughs> it's not a 10-year-old crusty marshmallow. <laughs> I just pick it from my friend's beard, stick it straight onto the cram. I saved uh, it for you. Do you guys like... you? So we're in the same page and just s'mores in general. You... We are all big s'mores fans. Yeah, they're great. And I like the modifications. Like, instead of using a Hershey bar, use, like, a Reese's cup in the s'more. That's delicious. Excuse me? <laughs> Try it. <laughs> I feel like I've tried it, but it, the her, the Hershey's cup holds up to the heat. But, like, the chocolate, like the Hershey's m- chocolate melts. And that's what makes it good when you put a hot marshmallow on it. Unless you're Novak and you're using an ice-cold marshmallow, <laughs> which makes no fucking sense. So... <laughs> Novak, who likes his marshmallows straight out of the freezer. <laughs> yeah, you make an ice pop with it. But, like, for the Reese's, it's thicker and denser. I feel like it doesn't melt as much. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't know. I've tried it once, and I was like, eh, it's okay. I've been t- You're doing it wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, in good uh, standing with those, and we'll move on to our next one. Now, these, these next couple things, we'll do the crisps next. We'll save it. Butter for last, because it's going to be messier. So, uh, butter. <laughs> you make it sound like we're just going to eat a stick of butter. <laughs> you, pick, you pick these up at work, this Kamita. First, let me say what they are. They're Kamita crisps, uh, original, sweet chili flavored. What are these things? <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of words on the package to read. <laughs> I've read the whole front, and I still don't know what the hell they are. <laughs> I mean, there's there's clearly some peanuts in there, and then they just look like little crispy, like they they kind of look like uh, newborns' fingers. Like if you cut the fingers off of a bunch of newborns and then painted them orange, like newborn babies. That's kind of what, what the they look fuck like to me. You, these are like talons. How do you eat with that? With what you, if that's you know, the visualization going on in your head? How the hell do you eat these things? <laughs> Aren't these basically just like rice crackers, essentially? Yeah, I think that's what they are. I'm bad at describing things. These are just sitting at your work for you to pick up? Uh, yeah. I mean, at work, they have, we're a bunch of spoiled brats at work, and so they have the micro kitchen, which is this little room that just has all these snacks, and because I, the, you know, because my job, there's, they don't, they don't want to, like, buy too many mainstream sta- snacks. Everybody's trying to be like, oh, let's support these small companies or whatever, so... I don't know, maybe these are owned by Mars Inc. and I don't actually know it, but they try to buy like all these weird random snacks that uh, nobody's ever heard of. All right, so we'll dig in here. I am having a lot of trouble getting mine open. Yeah, I had to pull the, I had to put the teeth to the uh, plastic to get them open. So there's two different pieces in here. There's a peanut and then like you said the baby finger pieces, <laughs> which I suppose are the <laughs> chili. So when we say sweet chili, it's a combination. I'm not so sure about what we're going to be getting here. On the back, too, it says contains fish, which is interesting. Yeah, it does say contains. I thought you were joking. 
No, it says contains bonito extract. So I, well, I know in a lot of like Asian food, they use like seaweed and like fish oil and stuff like that. So I'm assuming it's something like that, like an essence of bonito or something like that. But interesting. All right, I should probably just eat it. All right, I had a peanut first. Uh-huh. It tasted like a peanut. Thanks. Thanks for that report. Ooh, oh, man. <laughs> well, what happened? The chili ones are... Spicy? I got a little kick. I wasn't expecting it. Now I'm excited. Well, your reaction made it sound like they shot you in the mouth. Oh, I crunched in and it just came exploding. Am I the only one who can't get this bag open? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just talking... Like, Novak had to use his teeth. I had to okay. run and grab a pair of scissors real quick. <laughs> Sorry, I had to take... I had to quick step away for a second. Okay. Here we go. These peanuts, uh, these peanuts need salt. <laughs> He's so angry sounding. <laughs> well, you might not think so if you eat the other pieces with it, because the other pieces provide plenty of spice, like Novak was saying. Yeah. The Have you had the favorite. other ones yet, Chad? Yeah, I had the other ones originally by itself, then I had a peanut by itself, and then I just tried the combo. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to try the combo. So, Chad... How do these baby fingers taste to actual human baby fingers? Um, I'll take the regular human baby fingers. Right. <laughs> I think the combo is the way to go, actually. Yeah, it's it's ideal as a combo. It kills the straight-up spice. And yeah, it's just another one of these things that is not quite salty enough, as you would expect. Yeah. Now, you guys don't like spice. You said so earlier. Is this too spicy for you, or just the right amount? This is too spicy for me. I think this is fine. Like, it's... The reasons that I might not eat this again are, are not the spice uh, so much as everything else. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't love. I don't love eating snacks when I need to have water sitting right near me. And that's. I feel like this is a small bag, and this is what is it? Less than an ounce worth of food, and I would probably go through a bottle of water eating this package. These are gluten free, which is good. We can have these in the house. My wife can eat these. But yeah, I actually think these are pretty tasty. They're not too spicy for me. I take issue that they say they're the perfect savory snack. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Camita Crisps. But I do think this is something, like if you gave me a small pouch like this as a snack, like during lunch, I'd be fine. Or like during the day at work, I'm fine with this. This is actually pretty tasty. I actually didn't get a lot of the spice at first, but now that I've stopped eating, it's like sitting on my tongue. And I kind of just want to take these scissors I went and got and just completely cut my tongue out. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like that would feel better. I didn't, I didn't get, I think the full enjoyment came was when I paired a peanut with a rice cracker and that I felt like tasted the best and didn't kill anything. Except the other issue with that is there are about three times as many rice crackers as peanuts, at least in my bag. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to figure out with, with snacks like this where you're supposed to mix and match. Like I run into this with trail mix too, is like, What's the ratio of, the, you know, like how many rice crackers do you want to eat per peanut to have those perfect bites? And then what happens when you run out of, of something? And What is the uh, what is your best mix and match snack, like a Chex Mix, et cetera, that sort of thing? I do like uh, there's there's a trail mix brand. I forget what it's called. They sell it at Target, but we always buy it before we go on like a vacation or something just to have it in our bag for snacking purposes. But it has like peanut butter chips and then Reese's pieces and then peanuts and then uh, like little pretzel bites and that sort of thing is basically perfect. It's like all things that I like and I could eat any of them individually or any of the combinations work. Uh, So I probably should know what brand that is, but I just sort of recognize it by the bag. I am a a big Gardettos fan. I like the Gardettos. That's, I guess, called in the same vein. What are those? I don't think I know that. Gardettos is you pretty much you find them in most gas stations. I seem to end up getting them on road trips and stuff. But it's there's pretzels, there's like little breadsticks. They're all sort of garlicky tasting. Um, and then there's uh, rye chips, like these crunchy brown uh, circles. It's just it's all crunchy stuff. And so I guess that's another one we're gonna have to uh, I'll put on my list for a future episode because I don't know. How, I feel like Gardettos are popular, but I guess that's just because I eat, uh, eat them. Because uh, Geiger, if you had the Gardettos, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, Chad, I think you'd know them if you saw them. Like they're like you got the big, like thick white breadstick segments, and then the big like garlicky brown like curved rye chips and like pretzels and a few other things. They're pretty good. Chex Mix makes kind of a version of it too. I want to agree. I like Gardettos a lot. I also like 
like they had, they sell it at the CVS right before I get on the train coming home. And sometimes I'll grab it if I'm working late and I just need a snack before I get home for dinner. And it'll be like a spicy trail mix. It's got like sesame seeds and like those little like sesame sticks. And um, sometimes like a like a wasabi pea and like some, like kind of like Cajun flavor, like crunchy, savory snacks. I like those a lot. Peanuts usually are in there. Uh, and stuff like that. So, these are, I uh, do we I have eaten almost the whole bag of this. I like these a lot, actually. Well, that's that's really nothing new about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I ate the whole bag just like that. <laughs> I, 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 while 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 Novak was talking there, I was just watching you like throw them into your mouth, and like one of them's like bouncing off your beard, like into the <laughs> floor. <laughs> it's like, all right, I guess he's enjoying those. Would you? Um, Stuff these into <laughs> your underwear for a big yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean because they're too. They, they're they, spicy. They're, and the, and the tips are kind of like pointed so that that you could get it lodged <laughs> up your urethra pretty easy, I think. So I would want. I wouldn't want to get. Not sure how, how easy that would be. Situation. <laughs> pretty easily. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, do I want to take a shower and wash off a bunch of Cool Ranch Doritos and baby fingers from that? Sounds terrible. I'm not going to finish that. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, I would crush these on my nuts. <laughs> Chad, Chad, why don't you start the uh, rating? These are too spicy for me, and even with the combination with the peanuts, I didn't enjoy that. I don't like the aftertaste. So I'm going to – but at the same time, I didn't want to spit them out, so I will dislike that. All right, uh, Geiger, what do you think? I just want to pause and say our – I can't wait to see what we get for hate dad because it's like from the last couple I was like, well, I didn't spit it out. It didn't revolt me. I hated uh, the handy snacks. I pulled a hate dad with the Hershey's. Yeah, we, I think we all did. Okay. You're the only one that's eating every food and loving it. <laughs> no, I hated the, <laughs> I hated uh, dad handy snack. Um, all right. That's just, I know, but that's, that's just like saying, oh yeah, I don't like racism. Like, yeah, it's just easy. <laughs> way to go out on a limb there, guy. <laughs> I am, for the record, guys, for those listening, I hate that racism. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. I would spit it out and throw it across the lawn. Move it on quickly. I'm indifferent. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anywho. <laughs> um, no, I, I, like I said, I, I like these. These are good. Um, I would eat these as a snack. I don't think they're too spicy. I like kind of a little bit of spice, so I think this is the right level for me. I would give these a like that. All right. Well, I think I'm going to split the difference here, fellas, because... Uh... On racism, or <laughs> I between Geiger, who is very open-minded, and Chad, known racist, I'm gonna go right in the middle. <laughs> no, I would eat these maybe at a, occasionally, and actually, the only time I really liked them was the combo. But I did like the combo once once I got there. So I'm gonna just say indifferent to that for these. But I I will admit I'm closer to disliking. And I won't really have to say I'll never pick these up because I never see these things anywhere. So I'm not sure how readily available they are. But if you're a person who likes a spicy chip, I'd just as soon eat these as, a, you know, like a spicy Dorito or something like that. All right. So we got a dislike, an indifferent, and a like. for a little spread out on that one. As far as spicy things we've tried, these are definitely better than that scab popcorn one. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about the scabs in that popcorn. Yeah, that that jalapeno popcorn was void of flavor or anything. It was just bad. I ate the whole bag. <laughs> <laughs> I, like it, okay. I told you, you before this... we started, I was worried that I would just be indiscriminately eating everything and liking it. I think I we did should actually... just change this to... I ate the whole bag with Nick Geiger and friends. <laughs> uh. Okay, so before we move on to this to this next one, the honey peanut butter blend, I just want to point out the instructions on the back where it says knead and squeeze before opening. All right. Because you have to kind of like this is so this is a honey and peanut butter blend as the name says, it's Justin's brand, but I think they're separated in the bag, so you kind of have to like sort of just squeeze them around with your fingers in order to like mix. Right before you open it are we are we eating like just squirting it straight into our mouth or are we putting it yeah, on yeah you tear it open and then you just squeeze it into your mouth like toothpaste because that's how you guys brush your teeth right you just squeeze the tube into your mouth i went and got a, a plain townhouse cracker so i'll try it both ways though have you had this before chin i have so so these we buy because so my wife likes to 
snack. Uh, so she will actually carry these around in her purse. So she's a huge fan of these. I think they're all, all right, but I'm curious to see what you guys think. My wife eats regularly eats the almond butter versions of these. Mm. Um, I do not, so I have not had any of them. I see Chad now squirting it into his mouth. Yeah. Do it slower. There you go. It basically is a small, I don't know how to describe this. It looks like a condom or something. You know, on the outside, it's about the size of the package. All right, Novak. Wait. <laughs> I'm calling BS on that. <laughs> you have never seen a condom this big in your well, life. Well, no, the the wrapper, sh- the shape, and the general... I mean, it's a small package. It's a, squ- <laughs> it's a square piece of plastic, maybe. I'll give you that. And I consume it the same way I consume condoms, by squeezing them into There's my mouth. There's no other food you buy of this size. What else do you buy in this size of a package? Not uh... a cookie of crisp. No, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that the instructions for this are the same as the instructions for a Cool Ranch that I keep in my pants. That I need you to knead and squeeze it before opening. This also is hard to open. I had to go teeth again. You had to go teeth? No. Chad, how'd you get there's yours? A little, uh, there's a little notch that you tear it with on the side. Mine does not have any said notch. I thought it say tear, but hmm. I'm squeezing the package into my mouth. So here's the thing. I, I love peanut butter, and I will just sit there with a jar of peanut butter and spoon it into my mouth like a savage. Uh, <laughs> but the, but this is not quite that same experience. This is a little less sweet than, like, your typical, if you buy, like, you know, Jif or something, peanut butter. So that's not necessarily a good thing, depending on how much you like sweet things. What do you guys think? All right. I, so I, I, You're trying it with a I went straight now, into my mouth the first time for the first couple squeezes, and... I did not enjoy that experience. <laughs> and I would eat a straight-up spoonful of peanut butter. I've done that. I love peanut butter, but I agree. It's just not quite as good. Now, I put it on the cracker. It kind of gums up your mouth a little bit. I put it on the cracker, and I'm enjoying it twice as much. So there's something to be said for maybe just not eating it straight from the package. Okay, yeah, right? I don't – I love, love, love peanut butter. That's like growing up, everyday peanut butter toast, peanut butter sandwich – I still eat peanut butter all the time. To me, this is like not this. It's, and I realize it's probably because it's like natural peanut butter, not like Chad was saying, like Jeff is kind of processed. It's kind of gritty. There's almost like a gritty, like grimy to it. And I don't taste any of the honey. I just taste peanut. So I don't know that I would ever grab this for a snack. It's, it's not the peanut butter I'm expecting to taste. And I don't, I don't know. I'm not as big a fan of it. It's not bad, but it's just. I don't see ever where I would grab this, eat it plain. And if I'm going to spread something on a cracker, I'd rather just spread like uh, Jiffy or something on it. I wish you guys had a cracker because the difference is night and day to me. We should try the almond butter flavor in a future episode and uh, do a comparison. Yeah, I've never tried that one. So uh, I'll start since I haven't started one yet. I uh, I was going to go so far as to say dislike that for just eating it straight. But then I put this thing on a cracker, which... I'm going to go with that rating because that would be how I would eat it if I were to eat it again. So I am actually going to say that I'm going to give it a like that uh, with the cracker. So there's a bullet point. There's a star here to to this rating. But I'm not sure it's fair to just judge something like peanut butter uh, in its straight form straight from the package. So I'm going to go like that when paired with, with the surface. What do you guys think? I would say that I am fairly indifferent to that. I could kind of take it or leave it. This is not my favorite form of peanut butter or of honey or of squeezing things into my mouth. (laughs) Uh, So from that perspective, but at the same time, I love peanut butter. I'll eat almost any kind of peanut butter except the like super gross, like ultra natural ones. You know, like the like super hippie peanut butter or whatever. Like, forget that stuff that good that would be good for you. I will eat any kind of peanut butter that's not actually natural peanut. Butter. <laughs> right. If if it doesn't have like a bucket of sugar. <laughs> the only peanut butter I don't like is peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big fan of triglycerides with a little essence of peanut in them. I guess I I really don't like the peanut butter that you have to stir. That's the one I don't like. Is if you have to stir it, then I'm out. So yeah, I'll go. I'll go ahead and different. To Is that. that because you're too lazy to stir? Or just you know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Are you a chunky or smooth peanut butter guy? 
I've transitioned. I used to be smooth peanut butter, but yeah, I've been getting chunky more and more lately. And I think now I'm officially chunky peanut butter. So I like my peanut butter like I like myself, which is chunky. <laughs> I think there's a special place in hell for people who eat chunky peanut butter. I don't <laughs> I don't understand it. And to me, it makes no sense. It's just one of the easiest decisions that ever was. So I, I don't get the chunky at all, okay? I mean, I've had chunky. It's not terrible. It's hard to spread, and I don't think it tastes great. So I guess I just described it as being terrible. <laughs> um, I like smooth all the way. Uh, and I, I am with you, Chad. I don't like the super, like, I, I'm a fan of, like, the processed peanut butter, too, not the, like, the super hippie, like, there's, like, oil sitting on top of it, and you got to stir it up, peanut butter. I think we've been getting skippy my entire adult life, and that's, and even as a kid, we had it, so that's kind of what I'm predisposed to liking. Where does Justin's fall in terms of the, just being somewhere hippie. between Jif and, like, Sarah's organic imported peanut butter? I don't know. I, to me, it feels a lot. I haven't eaten a ton of the organic kind of stuff. I feel like it's more on that well, well, well down the line on that stuff because it seems like kind of like it, it tastes like real peanut and it's like real gritty. Like there's pieces of peanut in there. It just seems a lot more hippie food. Than... <laughs> We're describing this. <laughs> the problem is <laughs> I can taste the peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> The worst part about peanut butter is <laughs> peanut and or butter. <laughs> now that I'm sitting here with this, I'm I am, I'm going to switch mine to an indifferent. I gave it the like. Cracker, <laughs> no, it's just, uh, not only am I sitting here and the aftertaste is not great, but we're talking about these processed peanut butters, which I love so dearly. And it's just nowhere near that. Um, I was I was actually going to say indifferent to that, too. I don't, it's fine. I, if someone handed me one and that's all the food we had in the car, then... I thought we planned poorly, but that's fine. <laughs> they pull up with a truck, and the truck bed is just full of packets of these, and they're like, are you ready to go? Let's go. Yum. Like, I don't I don't even get the whole having this in your purse. Like, to me, it's not a convenient snack to eat, either. Like, squirting this super sticky crap into my mouth <laughs> is not like a... Isn't it easier just to eat, like, a protein bar or something? Like, that's so much more handy to me, but... That's my wife you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Your wife can squirt sticky stuff into your mouth all that all she wants, but I just to me it's indifferent. I don't hate it, I don't love it. It's just it's fine. It's me. All right. So we have uh what what was your shed? Were you indifferent? Yes. Three indifferent. So this product no longer exists to us. <laughs> 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 so uh the winner the clear winner today <laughs> again we're gonna go out on the limb. <laughs> go get <laughs> Those packaged pinwheels. <laughs> I mean, there are a reason. There's there are a reason that these things are have been around for so since we were kids. It's because they're delicious. For future episodes, everyone, just go and figure out the gross revenue of each product that we're buying, and whoever <laughs> is just the biggest corporation. That's who we're going with, guys. That's who. That's who we like. <laughs> Nabisco, no, these are, t I mean, it's just, the, it's the best tasting. And again, maybe we grew up with less refined, like, I never ate anything remotely hippie-ish going up. Like, the snacks we got were your basic from the... Like how we're now using hippie-ish <laughs> to describe, like, natural stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm I would love to know if Justin's peanut butter is, like, <laughs> not, not some crazy hippie. Hey, look, hey, Justin, Justin. Turn your 70s music down, trim your long, wavy Jesus beard, get, put some real shoes on, and maybe I'll eat your food. I, I say hippie is like, if you had handed my dad, to this day, like a pack of edamame to eat, or a packet of honey <laughs> peanut butter, he would punch you through, through the side of the car. He would be like, give me some real fucking food. I just pulled up the Justin's website, and they have a story. Uh, they have a picture of Justin. He's kind of got long, curly hair. He looks a little like a hippie. <laughs> and there's one paragraph here. I'll read it to you. You tell me if this guy's a hippie or not. It's 2004. The story began when Justin Gold, a lover of the active lifestyle, moved to Boulder, Colorado in his 20s. In order, uh -oh. to, fuel, in order to fuel his long bike rides, Justin uh -oh. embarked on a mission to create new varieties of nut butter that not only packed the protein, but also tasted great. He began crafting the very first batches of his now famous culinary butters in his home kitchen. Hippie! Hippie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give Justin a rating of hippie dad. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, that guy's a full-fledged hippie, Novak. He rides his bike! What's more hippie than riding a bike? <laughs> right? Like, and makes his own butter? What? <laughs> Not only is this asshole riding a bike, but he also has peanut butter with an actual peanut in it. <laughs> what a jacket. Burn him at the stake. <laughs> I like how we started by this was okay too. This fucking douchebag with his bike. Justin, the <laughs> you're a nice guy. You might just want to pack a bit more preservatives and unnatural food into your peanut butter. <laughs> How dare he not invent food in a laboratory? What's so convenient about going on a bike ride with a whole uh, can of peanut butter and a spoon and just, just gouging out giant glops of Jiffy peanut butter into your mouth? I'm just imagining him, like, biking down the street and he's wearing one of those, like, football beer helmets, but they're full of peanut butter and he's just <laughs> sucking it through a straw. Also, I realize I've been calling it Jiffy this entire time. I meant Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> it's an entirely different type of peanut butter. I want to see the inventor of pinwheels riding his bike, just jamming pinwheels into his mouth. <laughs> They're so convenient. <laughs> I would sooner eat pinwheels. How many pinwheels do you think you could eat while riding a bike before your stomach hurt so bad you just had to stop riding? What kind of question is that? <laughs> this is our new segment, Dumbass Questions. <laughs> Uh, uh, seven? I don't know. <laughs> All right. Are we fine. doing prices right rules here? Like... <laughs> I, I honestly think if I eat more than about three pinwheels on a sitting, I'd probably uh, be a little too full to give your an- your question a serious answer. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate. So it. I will. I will say three packages. <laughs> Well, these hippies at Nabisco, when they made their power-packed cookie, no, um, I could eat none of these while riding a bike. I don't ride a bike. Have you guys ever had any of those, the squeezable gels that runners use? I know, Chad, you have done some half marathons, and yeah. have you ever used any of those gels? I did. The first time I ran my very first half marathon, my friend who was running it with me was like, here, take these gels, and they also gave me... Some some of those, they're like little kind of gummy things in a packet. And so I tried them while I was running, but I just ended up getting the stickiness like all over like my fingers and mouth and stuff. And so then I'm r- running 13 miles with like sticky hands. So now I don't do that anymore. I only drink water when I run. I uh, tried one of the Gatorade versions. The Gatorade has this, like a series of four things. Like it's a Gatorade and then there's like... <laughs> <laughs> Four things you need, four Gatorade products you need to eat while you're going for a run. <laughs> well, it's like one's like recover, renew. I don't know. Well, I'm not a scientist. Gatorade, then right. But there was some sort of like, it was a liquid product. It wasn't quite a gel, but it was in between the gel and the regular Gatorade. And it had like extra protein in it. And it was weird and bad. I did not enjoy drinking it. I could have just had a Gatorade that somebody like put their protein in and gave it to me. I don't know. <laughs> I definitely remember those Gatorade products where it's like G1, 2, 3, 4, and it was, like, eat this when you're thinking of running. And then when you start to run, have this gel. And then yeah, like one was a gummy, different. like a chewy thing. Yeah, and then there was like a gel, and then there was whatever I drank, and then there was regular Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> so the moral of the story is stay away from whatever you drank. It, it wasn't good. <laughs> no, back up with you. Have you had the runner's gel? I'm not going to eat that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it's so off-putting, just the very sight of it. Yeah. Seems off-putting. I'd, I'd sooner, I'd probably be more likely to put some Justin's butter in my mouth on a long run. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That sounds miserable. Like the way it like dried my mouth out. I'm like, that's the last thing I want when I'm running is like a gummy mouth. Yeah, that was the first reaction I had. We're all starting to talk about it. And I couldn't speak. It was just like, nah. like trying to get <laughs> the roof of my mouth. Okay, let's say you just you were just crawling through the desert trying uh-huh. to survive. You finally make it to the <laughs> oasis, and there <laughs> is only the three snacks lined up that we had today. Which one are you gonna go for? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but the, in the desert, won't the pin, the pinwheel will be all melted and gooey, right? No, it's fresh. It's <laughs> they have a refrigerator over at the oasis. 
I mean, definitely the pinwheel. I think I would eat the pinwheel. A, it's going to have sugar to keep me going. B, it's the most substantial of the food. So, like, I'm fill my stomach faster by eating a few pinwheels. I think this this the peanut butter's got to be the only thing with any kind of water content. You'd think, right? But it's also the last thing you'd want to eat in the desert. Your mouth is going to be so dried out from eating peanut butter in the desert. That's true. Pinwheel will help. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not in the bag for Nabisco or anything, but I think the pinwheel solves most problems, right? <laughs> All right. I think we're going to call it here, boys. <laughs> so go out and get some pinwheels. That's a recommendation. And we will uh, catch you soon for episode five. See you.